This video is a part of my Elden Ring PvP Guides playlist. If you want to improve at the game, please check out the cards in top right corner. When you are getting into the menu uh, with your weapons and you're gonna click that L3, you have the select a sorting method. Essentially, you have that thing that is called order of acquisition. It allows you to set these things in whatever way you want. Let's bring the example if I am going to drop this rapier on the ground and then I'm gonna pick it up. Then, as you can see, it it's appears in the first, first row. It is essentially the first item. Furthermore, I can go here to the to the chest. Essentially, like, this is sometimes like kind of confusing because these things are not appearing in like a one menu. So you mm -hmm. kind of have to remember the order of, of the items, but I can, for an example, do, do something like that. Let's say like I want these items to be in the first row so I can take all of them move them here and take them out of the out of the chest and now they are gonna be on the first row i want to have all my rapiers on the second row then i'm taking them on the very top and then like i want to have the shields on the top so i'm going to the to the shields uh, top and uh, essentially uh clicking them again moving them again to the to the characters menu and from now on I have things organized exactly like I wanted, so I have like the, the shields on the top, here I have the rapiers, and then I have the rest weapons that I use. Uh, on the PC, there is like a one cool thing about inventory management, because like managing all these items might actually be super annoying at times. Normally, when I manage, I would be managing the inventory and I have to bring a lot of the weapons to, to my character. It might be tedious, you have to click that button and click that button, click that button, yeah? It, it takes some time, yeah? That's for sure. Uh, on PC, we have a life a little bit easier because I can take my mouse and hold my finger on the E button. And things getting a little bit faster because of that. I actually didn't know that. That's pretty cool. When it comes to organizing the rings, uh, because, well, like, swapping the, the rings is also quite important. Essentially, if you're gonna go here to the to the top with the, sorry, rings, talisman. So when you're gonna go to the, to the top of the talisman, things look exactly the same in your uh, inventory menu and the same here in the chest. So... If I if I want, for example, the Great Shield Talisman to be to be first, then I'm just like I'm moving it here, and that's about it. And from now on, indeed, like the the talisman gonna be here. Like this 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 look of the inventory, by the way, exactly the same story like with the with the menus. By clicking L3, you can select a certain method, and yeah, essentially the yeah. order of acquisition is the best. Yeah. One important thing that, that I, I probably we, we could mention like as a quick off topic. If you are playing PvP, then most likely you're gonna have to pick up your weapons. And essentially like picking up the weapons is relatively, relatively tedious. Unless let's say just like some sort of the weapon and hold the block. Mm -hmm. That's picking, very, very important. It's very important you are picking up stuff way faster. Let's talk a little bit about how you're supposed to, or perhaps like what is the good way of organizing the, the menus overall mm. for the sake of so you have the comfort of swapping, so you have a comfort of accessibility to your tools, let's call it that way. Mm -hmm. do, you, uh, do, you, do you have like any particular way how you, for an example, organize your stuff? Uh, yes, um, I just have two tips on how I approach uh, menu swapping or organizing my inventory. The first tip is obvious, I'm sure most of you know, is that when you, whenever you have a power stanced weapon, put them next to each other, like on top of each other, next to each other, just makes it easier for you to quickly swap to both of them, for you to notice them in your menu. The other thing, which is very important, and I don't see many people do this, I know that you do it still, uh, is that utilize the um, the L2 and the R2 in the menu. You know how if you press R2, it takes you all the way to the uh, to the bottom of the menu. That's why in L2. my case you have like the row of the of the mm -hmm. shields that are here for the sake of to party people because I am parting exactly. of the right hand. It, it is... can go beyond that too. If you have a bigger menu, you can use the R2 to um, uh, organize swaps. So like he, let's say you swap from the stitcher and then you have it organized so that if you press R2, you go all the way down to a um, let's say a great sword. Mm -hmm. So just keep that in mind while organizing your menu is what I would say. It takes you by five rows, yeah? It is mm -hmm. one, two, three, four, five. Yes? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is five rows, yeah. It, about about overall menus, like, people have different schools of, of, like, managing their menus. 
I, for an example, mm. have my main weapon somewhere in the menus and everything is fo focused around that. So on this particular build, I am actually running here the Ruins Greatsword recently and everything is organized in the way so I would have essentially easy access to the tools that support this particular weapon. If I want essentially to catch onto someone that is running away from me, I am swapping to HTS. If someone is running away and I don't want to chase them, I have a quick swap to the, fall, uh, to the Falling Star. If I am low on the HP and I want to pop my... Uh, I want to pop my uh, bubble, I have like easy swap to the Bloody Stash over here. If I want to parry, then I click L2 and essentially I have access to the shield. And in the lower row you have like a five rapiers for the sake to, to actually utilize the repost as the, the rapiers have relatively high motion volume on the on the parries and i also have a blood hunt step on every single of these in case if i'm going to encounter someone that is absolutely abusing everything in their book for the sake of so i have so i stand the chance against them because well blood hunt step sadly in current state of the game sometimes is a must yeah it is so i was thinking about that the other day this is a little bit off topic i'm sorry steel but i was thinking that bloodhound step is absolutely a necessity in 1v3s you can't yep. fight a 1v3 without bloodhound step especially if you have like situation that you have asynchronous latency with people i'm not sure if this is actually how you're supposed to, to call it like essentially if, uh, people that you are connected to have like a different latency to you and mm -hmm. some of them gonna start using like a stuff like for example a dragon head you are going to fucking die because you have two players that are pressuring at you and someone that is essentially like running a huge aoe and when you are exactly. rolling in this game you're essentially getting slowed down at the end of the roll so someone that is just chasing after you and like trying to run and attack on you like you're always going to be faster so without swap to the bloodhound step for the sake of to run away from the from the danger you're just going to get absolutely fucking obliterated yeah like i also use the diagonal uh, swap so here i have the thingy to hit through the walls which yeah like essentially bolsack goes through the walls which is hella fun <laughs> uh, I have uh, here I have Storm Storm just in case currently without mana but yeah here I have Flaming Strike which is a great zoning tool um, and essentially this is how I how I organize stuff and up here I have I have Rusted Anchors uh, I have relatively fast swap to these so yeah I can always like if there is like a situation where I have to one shot someone then I also have like a fast swap to these and I can just eliminate someone in one jump because well, these tools with the correct ring setup just completely demolish anything, like anyone, no matter how many devs someone has, unless they are using the BFP, then perhaps maybe they can survive. But this thing is going to do like a 2k damage. Only perhaps like a host with the Morgoth rune is going to survive the dual Royal Knights resolve jump with these, especially if you are going to counter hit. That's actually interesting because looking at your menu at first glance it looks extremely messy but it's actually really well organized are there like any sort of the universal items that you always supposed to, to have in your inventory no matter uh, what you always supposed to have them i mean this is a, a little bit controversial but i would honestly say the the helm swap because you do okay. fight a lot of gankers at helm swap in in lakes you can encounter a gangs that essentially know what is broken in the game and so on and one of these things one of these things uh, are the carolos glinstone mask and uh, olivino's glinstone mask because look at my hp it is 1235 if i'm going to equip the mask nothing happens but if i'm gonna start swapping between these yeah i have essentially yep. full hp it's crazy and if you if you encounter these gangs they also have bloodhound step so they can just bloodhound step away from you swap quickly and then you, you just you're back to neutral pretty much yeah you like you can refuse to use things that are hella broken and sure like cheers for doing that like this is what i'm doing 
I'm pretty sure this is what, what Hark is doing. But essentially, when you're going to find someone that is abusing everything against you, then, well, unless you just want to lose, you're supposed to also, like, use the, the broken shit. Just uh, treat them with their own medicine. Like, simple as that. Uh, if we both had good connection to each other and he was helm swapping, if you are the better player, you can still win. But you have to understand that a lot of these gankers are usually extremely laggy. So you just literally have every single odd stacked against you in that invasion it's a 1v3 they're all helm glitching they all have bloodhound step they're all extremely latent it's just there's not not much you can do unless you just want to go in and die and just be be done with it block and move on you know well that's up up to you you can you can eventually just like a surrender block the guy and move on or you can just like stand up to the challenge but yeah if you want to stand to the challenge then you sadly have to you you have to use what is broken or like at least what they are using yeah mm. i so i wouldn't use this in any other invasion i would only yeah. use this if they use it yeah the, the same like for in my case the same goes for the blood hunt step yeah if i am in the situation that that i find it only necessary to use then i'm gonna use it otherwise i'm not gonna use it i'm gonna take an mm. l it's like simple as that yeah for dueling i would definitely say royal remains it's pretty good yeah so how the royal remains working like is you essentially generate two hp per second for every single piece that you are currently have on if you are below 18 percent of your hp it's gonna take me a while to get there but <laughs> I, I will get there <laughs> at some point if you are going to be below 18 percent threshold these items gonna start healing you and here we are essentially as you can see oh i was essentially almost on the threshold here you go so i am regenerating that four hp per second because i am currently on the swap of the gauntlets and on the swap on the on the leggings uh, you can also swap uh, the helmet and the, the armor set uh, essentially I'm, I don't have these currently on the character so I cannot show it but you can have up to 8 per second plus on top of that there is also blist due talisman that heals you for the another 2 HP per second so you can you can heal with the speed of uh, 10 uh, points per second but I do not recommend it because if you are dwelling and there is no healing involved, then when you are below 20% threshold of the HP, you can use the blue feather talisman. So being below 20% HP is actually worth it. So it is it is good to not use the uh, blessed dew unless you are very good at counting your current amount of the HP because you're going to have to unequip un un it at some point. So, like, if you are going to bo go above the threshold uh, of, of this 20%, you are going to absolutely freak yourself over because you are not going to get these amazing defenses. Currently, mm -hmm. I am sitting at 65% physical defenses because of this talisman. If I'm going to take it off, it's 31%. So, like, the boost is huge. And on top of that, uh, smoothly going to yet another item... Maybe actually like worth to mention that like a blue feather talisman is definitely something that is supposed to have as well. You know, I would say that, yeah. There's yeah, a lot of talismans that are a must have. Blessed Dew talisman, blue feathered, claw talisman. Because jumps are like a, a part of the playstyle with every single weapon in the game. So you want to have claw talisman. Yeah, yeah, okay, um, that's that's correct, but uh, uh, essentially when it comes to the talismans that are definitely necessary, then like a blue feather is probably the one, yeah? And like is, ar yeah. arguably, uh, arguably, it's it's brother red feather as well, as well that increases your your damage. Mm -hmm. And there is like one more item that does exactly the same things that that was going under the radar for a while, but people started mm -hmm. realizing it is actually quite fucking broken. There I is love this shield. <laughs> that there is that one particular shield that I don't see. Okay, next here to brass we go. Shield. Yep. So yeah, this is something that I, I I keep on forgetting to get on my build, but I supposed to have it here. Essentially, this shield is 
either this way or the other other way around. It increasing your damage by 20% gives you 10% defenses or gives you 10% boost to the damage and, and gives you 20% defenses when you are low on the HP below 20% threshold. So either way it's insane. It's either either way it's insane. So for example right now my AR went to 1030. Whereas insane. normally Without these items, it would be 770. So the shield only over here gives me like a boost of almost 150. And then you slap like blue feather on it and you have like a 1030 a year. The, the king like drops the, the, the actually very important uh, info about item that we always supposed to have, which is Jar Cannon. Yeah, absolutely. Jar Cannon, absolutely, absolutely an item that you're always supposed to have on your menus when you are invading 100%. And you can use it for relatively free because of how big the game is. You can buy yourself a lot of space uh, to use it. It's not hard to use at all. Yep. So, and even accessibility for this item is relatively low. You need like 34 strength. But now, you can get 5 strength from the talisman, another 5 from the sword seal. So, this, th that is where, uh, where the uh, 10 additional strength comes from. And if you are going to 2-hunt uh, to, to the weapon, I think like you need... For, for Jar Cannon, you need like 24 strength? Yeah, 20, around like 24-25. And, uh, so on, not that much. If you, and on top of that, if you cannot like have the jar cannon, then you can use the ballista. Yeah. And th th these tools like working. If I'm not mistaken, they are working exactly the same. Yeah. Just that like one is stronger than other, and that's it. So and and ballista has like minimally less uh, of the of the strength requirement. Yeah. So essentially, you can technically use this tool on every single build. You would need to have like a nine base strength to not being able to use it. So yeah, like unless. But then if you have like nine base strength, then what you are playing? You are, you are probably playing the, uh, the the pure mage. So then you have access to the other stuff that work in like a jar cannon. So, so yeah, you, that essentially, yeah, it's, it's, it's worth to overall have an item that uh, can push people around of the of the ledges and so on and so forth yeah i guess uh, maybe something for shields i like was i was thinking exactly about the same and you know what what i started doing recently mm -hmm. so look at that yes this one mm -hmm. is normal yeah yeah and uh, this one is also kind of kind of normal yeah mm -hmm. uh <laughs> 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 it actually it actually one shots uh, I, I i'm i have to do like further testing against people that use the the great shield talisman uh but uh, for the fact i know that this setup with the with the crouch attack essentially i i never had a situation that i didn't break through the shield and i'm pretty sure even if, fingerprint even fingerprint but really? like there is there is a chance that the person that that was blocking didn't have the talisman on didn't have the uh, the the great shield talisman but then mm -hmm. i have this <laughs> and there is no way it's not gonna break <laughs> like the, there is no fucking way not not when you are using the uh, not when you are not when you are using the the hammer talisman not when you are using dual rkr and on top of that you are also using the uh, breaking thingy in the flask, yeah, temporary makes sense break easier. Mm -hmm. It is, it is actually absolutely demolishing. It's, it's it, that's good, but uh, I don't see this. Sadly, I don't see this working on like a dex build or any other sort of build. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Like I, that's that's actually that's that's true. It's not gonna work on the dex build. So yeah, this is ex essentially exclusively like the shield breaking in this actually this particular way is kind of. Uh, strength build exclusive, I would say. Mm. Knowing how to how to hard swap, how to menu swap, doesn't make it useless to have the items here on the soft swaps. Mm -hmm. Having a comfort of swapping is also important, and sometimes just having the constant possibility to just click that right D-pad and just swap to the another weapon is just 
more important important than than accessing on the high skill ceiling mechanic that is that is menu swapping and if if i have essentially possibility to slap the weapon here on the soft swap i'm absolutely going to do it because it is more consistent it is more consistent yeah